Um, hi, everyone. So my name is Ashish. Um, so it's a last minute call for me. Matt actually messaged me about like need to present something for this. Sorry. Can everyone hear me? Okay, awesome. Uh, so my name is Ashish. Um, I love working in cloud. So definitely cloud technologies. Worked in IT around 10 years. Um, my typical focus is keep learning, keep discovering things. Um, my LinkedIn and GitHub. Uh, in Toronto, it's basically one year for me. Around one year, basically. It's a new thing for me. Um, before this, I was in Singapore working for a fintech. Uh, right now, I'm working for an organization called Canvas AI. So we build soft sensor quality prediction, set point control. So basically, it's an industrial automation organization. Uh, yeah, so basically, these are some brands which we work with. Moving on. Uh, so I think why debugging, right? I think everybody understands in DevOps space, Kubernetes is a de facto for container or orchestration, correct? Like everyone knows Kubernetes, right? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So uh, basically Kubernetes gives default, like some capabilities where we can say uh, automation down the line, self-filling. So there are some features of Kubernetes, which is containerization, scalability, load balancing, self-filling, updates and configuration. So basically it's a system where you can write a code and run it and typically managed in Git. So basically version it. Uh, how it helps is it works as a software development practice where like a developer writes a code, keep it this way so we can do an infrastructure also nowadays. So debugging tools, I think Whenever we talk about debugging, uh, I have seen a lot of talks, people talk about um, like ELK stack, I don't know, monitoring stack, some new relic stuff and all like maybe Datadog. Uh, but there is definitely a good tool which we all know as kubectl. So I'm gonna show some demos like how kubectl can help in debugging, uh, not exactly at the Kubernetes management, which is basically master node or worker nodes, more in terms of, I think, developer level, how we can identify some of the errors or so. Uh, so basically when we start debugging, uh, if you ever worked or deployed a pod in Kubernetes, you must have seen some errors like this, like image pull back off, error image pull, crash loop. Some are, some pods are always in pending state, resource errors, some, some are in pending, some are in running state. Uh, so I'm going to cover some of them here, uh, like typical image errors. Uh, image errors definitely occurs because of invalid tag, invalid permissions. Um, kind of an example here, error image pull, image pull back off. Um, so typical, like you don't have a permission or whatever image you refer, it cannot be found. Uh, so this is a flowchart which I typically use and even advise my friends to use. Uh, so basically, this is related to the running ports. If you see some ports are running or some are not, so you can easily go back to do a get ports. If you see list is available of ports, yes or no. If no, there might be some errors under the like YAML file. So there are definitely much more tools in the market where you say YAML lint. One of them I listed here, QBval. So basically, you can validate your YAML against Q Kubernetes API. So that's how it works. Um, so consider now you get a port state, but port state is in either in pending or error. So you can easily do a describe on that port. Once you do a describe, you may see error, you might not see error. So, but if you see error, obviously you will fix the error. If you don't see error, uh, so there is definitely different things to do. One is kubectl events. So events is per namespace. So you can actually go ahead and see the namespace. Uh, if you see the events error, we will fix the error. Otherwise, nowadays, uh, with I think with 25 version of Kubernetes, there is an awesome utility, which is kubectl debug. Uh, so in kubectl debug, I'm going to cover a scenario. Uh, it may help you out in understand how capable it is. And we can obviously like you can even resolve some networking level of issues with that. 
So yeah, demo time. Um, uh, so how I'm gonna do this is, this is typically, uh, I'm running a kind cluster, 25.8 version. Um, Yeah, so this is a kind cluster I'm running. Uh, so I'm, I already prepared some of the scripts, which is uh, demo files, and we, I'm gonna run those. Nearly each script runs in each uh, individual space or individual namespace, so we can see through that. So as you see, it creates a new namespace. So I'll go, so I'm using a utility KNS. If nobody, if I, like people knows KNS, so it's a basically switching namespace utility. Um, it helps in that. So I'll go in, sorry, demo one, I'll list out the code. So now you see it's an image pull back off, but if I go back here, and see into like do a watch here. So you will see it shows image error image code. So basically what's happening behind the scenes is obviously whatever image I mentioned here, it's not able to pull it off. So what Kubernetes right behind the scenes, it goes, tries to find the image. If it's not found, it goes back in loop. So that's why you will see statuses keep switching. It's basically one error, which typically means uh, image not found. So just for these demos, I'm, because I'm using the NGNX image, so I'll remove these, whatever the deployments I, I have written here. So moving on, next demo, again, I created a separate namespace here. Um, obviously it will describe a different scenario now. Sorry. I made a mistake. So now you see all the ports are in pending state, right? Uh, basically why we can like, as I mentioned earlier, we have ports now in pending state. So you can do a kubectl describe over it. Now you can see it's a uh, something related to here insufficient CPU. So how this error is occurring is like, if I do a kubectl get notes, and if I describe this notebook, you will see my node has a capacity of CPU four but actually I'm assigning the capacity here to the board as five. So obviously it will remain in pending state and it does not acquire the same CPU. Uh, so again, moving on to the third demo. So now you see it's a different deployment and it has some image pull back off. That's very different. Oh, I think I'm not connected to internet. That's why it's, sorry. Uh, I don't know how to, can, can I connect to internet? Okay, let me connect my phone. No, I, yeah, I think so, sorry. I just couldn't download that image. I thought I downloaded it earlier. Yes,
Oh, sorry. RTH exclamation mark. Fill in Okay. Uh, sorry, I think it was not able to download the image at that stage. So you will see it's running. Uh, okay, maybe I'll describe a bit in the code also. So I'm running this demo three file. So basically what it do here is uh, you can see the arguments, which is basically sleep for 10 seconds. And it writes sleep expired in dev termination loan. So basically dev termination log is a path where you can see a message in the board, uh, which typically means is if I go, like you can see there, the boards are getting completed now. And if I pick up any of this board and do a describe, so if you see up, right, so this message, this is the message which I forcefully written um, in that argument script. So typically you can write also if something really needs to be done that way. Um, okay. Moving on to demo four, again, it creates a separate namespace. Let's go down. So you will see now one is running, others are pending, and it will remain same. Like we can wait, like because normally if configuration is same, usually what happens is uh, like this is a scenario where people get confused, like why one is running, others are not. So you can definitely know why. Uh, reason being for this typical is uh, what I did here, because if you remember, I'm running one node kind cluster and in my current file, I associated a host code. So which typically means a computer or any of the one server can have only one host code. So definitely other two instances will never able to acquire that code. And obviously it will remain pending until and unless I kill something or uh, reduce that. Okay, let's move to one more. So you see now the deploy, uh, something is like stateful set and namespace is being created. If I go KNS uh, demo five, 
Uh, so the good thing, no boats. Although everyone's seen that like one stateful set is being created, right? And if I go, if I cancel this thing, and look for stateful set, it's still there, right? But we don't know why this port is not being started or why port is not even existing right now. Uh, obviously, when we do this, it should exist, right? Uh, so the best way to find out this is read, start reading of uh, uh, events of Kubernetes. So what Kubernetes do is behind the scenes, it runs some of the events. Uh, it's a very good point if you can't find anything in Kubernetes, like you have to read events and events are normally uh, what you call typically is a namespace based. You can always definitely, you know, like with the hyphen hyphen all namespace, you can get those events. But when you read this event, you will know like uh, there is a volume called, uh, some volume is invalid, right? So there is one volume is volume five, but there is something called volume eight. So basically it's not, it's not able to find the volume, right? So that's how typically we can debug, uh, at least now at the board level things. Uh, after this actually works, the thing um, which I mentioned earlier, this is a new thing in 25th version of Kubernetes, which is kubectl debug. Uh, people don't use it, but when you can't find anything, like you don't see any event, you don't see logs, nothing is working. So for example, I'm gonna run, okay, I'm copying, Notes. So I'm run. I'm running a very basic <laughs> nginx image. Right. So it's running. It's a very basic nginx server, uh, default nginx image. So what we're gonna do here is like I can do a kubectl. Right. So I'm into bash. Uh, so it depends on what kind of container you built in. So this is a default nginx, which has a shell prompt available. So you can definitely access shell and make modifications um, if you want to. Like, for example, I'm going to do, or I'm going to change the basic HTML, which nginx serve to only demo, right? Uh, Considering now this shell is not available and you will see there is an error called OCI runtime errors or like shell is not found in the dollar path variable. What you can do in those cases, right? So that's the biggest concern. Right now, no service is attached to it. So you can't really do a port forward, uh, which typically means you can't go see any of the local host or anything, right? So Kubernetes bring this feature now in the, in the picture where you can actually connect a debugger port which was not previously available. So basically what this will do is I can connect a board here. You will see now I'm accessing root at the rate my board, right? And I can do this like, if I do a curl, it says curl not found, right? Obviously it's a new container using Ubuntu image and curl in OS installed in this. But so you can think of in a networking terms, like there is no network utility on the main port. So you can't really do a IP NAT or IP config or NETCAT, any of the tools in that port. But you can definitely do in this port now because it's a debugger port associated here. So you can go do a app cat update and obviously it will update your like complete. Right now I'm running Ubuntu. So obviously it's <laughs> updating Ubuntu. So I can go ahead and like, if for example, I need to test the networking, right? So I can go ahead and install, um, like for example, right now, curl, right? So when I install curl here, you will see everything is working fine. My, like my main port, which is my port is still there, but I attach the debugging port and I can do any of the network analysis, right? So now if I do a curl localhost, you will see the demo, which I modified in the Nginx port, right? Um, if just just to be more curiosity, kubectl get boards. 
Um, so you will see the my board, right? If I do a cube CTL describe board, my board, you will see here it's attached a ephemeral container, which I did with the cube CTL debug. So what you get out of this is like you can mount, you can verify environment, you can do a hell lot of stuff here. You can install extra tools. You can cross verify networking. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, you can like connect any of the tools here and do a debugging. The only thing to remember here is because this port is attached permanently, even if like, for example, I exit it here, it will be attached as a completed port. So you will see here, it will be attached as a terminated port. So what you need to do is you need to go ahead and delete this port. So you can delete that also. So basically it gives you a capability to debug at any stance uh, anything in Kubernetes now. Yep, I think that's pretty much my presentation. I hope I'm on time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Sorry. Time for a couple of questions, which no one will come to the crowd. So if anyone has any questions, put your hands up. Um, and she will also be here after, so there'll be more time for questions. Hey, Ashish, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a DevOps engineer. This is a really cool stuff which you display here. Thank you for that. The debug container which you showed in the latest yeah. Kubernetes version, is it being attached as a sidecar container here? Yes. How? Okay. So then you have... There are multiple features now in debug command. Uh, obviously, I can't demo all of them. So one is it can be connected as a sidecar. It can even copy the real container and bring a new container completely. So you don't need to attach a container. What I demoed is it's just connect, like attaching a container to it. So what it will do is it will recreate a my code as well as a deeper container. So you can definitely like have a independent things and do that. So once we are done, we are supposed to terminate that sidecar container manually or would it go away? So as termination as soon as you will come out of the bash, right? It happened there, like it's there, but it will remain there. If you really want to reattach, you can. But if you want to remove it, you need to do a cube state delete the container. All right, cool. Thank you.